Hey guys, Mitch here with Super Platinum Achievement, and we've got a quick little highlight and uh, my thoughts on the first official day of E3. Let's talk about it. First off, guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, at the end of the video, give us a big thumbs up if you like what you see today, and uh, we hope to see you again. So to kick off E3, uh, we had a couple of indie developers. We're going to kind of skip over those because they weren't uh, kind of the big games that a lot of people wanted to see, but we had Grella Collective. Um, they announced a few games, but we're going to skip uh, right ahead to Ubisoft. This is the first big presentation of E3. Ubisoft had their Ubisoft Forward that they've been doing uh, about the last year or so, um, where uh, they kind of follow just the digital thing and they're doing them more often. So the first thing they talked about was the thing we predicted they were going to open up the show with, and that's uh, Rainbow Six Extraction, formerly known as a Rainbow Six Quarantine, and then before that, Parasite. And um, with the extraction, they showed us some in-depth gameplay. We got a lot to it. Um, there's the um, Parasite, which is known as uh, the Sprawl or the uh, uh, Achaeans, I believe is what, how they said them, or Achaeans. And the Sprawl is that uh, like symbiote-looking goo that kind of spreads throughout. And basically what you have to do is you're put into this scenario uh, with your squads and your operators and you have to eliminate the um, infection there and take out the different nests um, to complete your objective. And while you're doing this, um, one of your opter operatives could get, uh, I guess, captured. And if you fail that mission and that operative remains captured, you can no longer play as that operative, uh, which is pretty cool. Also, you if you do fail and die and lose that operative, you can lose all your upgrades, all your progress on that operative, which is pretty big risk, uh, which is kind of cool. I mean, that puts a lot on the line for these missions. You want to make sure you do it right, and you're not just uh, Leroy Jenkins in the thing. So that game looks really awesome. Uh, they did announce crossplay is going to be happening, um, and that it is coming to Google Stadia as well, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I've got some notes here, and that uh, officially comes out on September 16th, so I'm really excited for that one. Um, I didn't play Rainbow Six Siege a whole lot, uh, but I think I will uh, pick this one up and play, um, especially if we can get that Ubisoft Plus on console here soon, because it is available on Ubisoft Plus at launch. The next thing they talked about was um, something that I hadn't heard of before, but uh, apparently they've talked about it, and this is the first version of this, and that's Rocksmith Plus. And it's a guitar lesson sort of thing mixed with Guitar Hero. So you're using a real guitar, and it's able to recognize the notes that you play, and you can beat the game, and then it criticize not criticizes you, critiques you, um, and kind of teaches you how to play guitar. Uh, just looking at it, um, for most people, I don't think this is probably the best way to learn guitar. I think you should still take from a live person. Uh, however, um, this would be a great um, you know, addition to learning guitar. So say you have your regular guitar lessons, and then to practice, you can do this. I think that's awesome. It's a lot of fun, um, and it prevents a new, or presents a new challenge as well. So that looks pretty cool. Um, and that comes out um, today for a closed beta. So you can register um, on their website and uh, try and get first access to that. And then the next thing they touched on um, was another game that was already announced. That's Writer's Republic. Um, I'm not too stoked about this game. It's not my style of game, but it's kind of an extreme sports all mixed into one kind of lobby. Um, you got the air gliding, you got snowboarding, mountain biking, extreme downhill. All of that kind of combined into one it looks really cool. The game mode that did kind of appeal to me kind of brought me back to Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Um, and they called it, uh, what they call it, Tricks Battle, where you and your team have to do tricks on these different areas of the um, course. And then you get points and it changes your color. That's exactly what it was in Tony Hawk with the paint two-player mode, which was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that a lot. So Riders Republic looks like it'll be a lot of fun for some people. Not my type of game, but I know some people are really excited for it. 
Then they brought back to uh, Rainbow Six Siege and talked about it coming to Stadia, Luna, and PC for cross-platform play at the end of this month. And then it'll be available for cross-platform um, on consoles uh, early next year. So that's cool, finally getting cross-platform uh, cross with that. And then they announced a, uh, a new operator, operator as well, Thunderbird. Uh, so you got somebody new, and then you got her um, perk, I guess you'd call it, of Kona, um, that can heal uh, your um, fellow operators. So they are continuing to do what Ubisoft does and support the games they already have out there, which is awesome. Uh, that being said, that's the next thing they uh, did. They're releasing updates to all their live games. They've got this track racing game. They've got Brawlhalla, and uh, Brawlhalla is getting the Ninja Turtles, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, not huge highlights there. They kind of just showed them real quickly because they just wanted to let us know without taking up too much of their event. And then they announced Just Dance 2022 is coming out in November. Big surprise. Um, so, you know, it's Just Dance with new music. So, moving on. Uh, and then uh, the other thing that they did that wasn't shocking to me, I kind of expected it, and I believe we talked about it in one of our other videos, is Assassin's Creed Valhalla is continuing to be supported and updated. So they're not going to release a new Assassin's Creed uh, this next year like they've been doing, kind of one a year thing. They're going to take at least a year, it sounded like two years off, and focus on Valhalla primarily. Uh, they've got some new DLC coming for Valhalla, um, the Siege of Paris that's coming this summer, and then um, you've got the Discovery Tour, the Viking Age, which kind of seemed weird. That's kind of where you just uh, act as a, a person in that day, almost seemed like a Sims thing where you get to live their everyday life. Um, but I'm not sure, they didn't dive into a big detail on that, but it's an interesting addition to the game. Um, but yeah, Valhalla is getting a lot of support. They said they're gonna support it well into its second year and beyond. So that's why I'm thinking we're not going to get another Assassin's Creed game probably until 2023 at the very soonest, if not 2024, which is what I'm guessing. And then moving on, uh, they did uh, talk about their movie and TV studios, which uh, I wasn't expecting that. But um, when they mentioned it, the first thing I thought of, I'm like, oh, we're going to see some of the Assassin's Creed um, TV show coming to Netflix, and no, we didn't. They talked about two shows. They talked about season two of Mythic Quest on Apple TV, and then they talked about the Werewolf Within, and that's a movie, and that actually looks pretty funny and looks like something I could uh, I could enjoy. Um, and uh, they showed us a big in-depth trailer of that. So Ubisoft diving into another realm of media with movies and TV, and then uh, we got. Like we, what we said is going to be the big meat of the uh, conference, and that was Far Cry 6. That's their next huge game that's coming. Um, we got another little trailer with Giancarlo Esposito. I believe I said that right. Um, and that was really cool seeing that. We didn't get a lot of gameplay, though, which I was a little bit shocked at. I thought we were going to get some really in-depth gameplay, and we didn't. They might have done something after. I didn't watch all of the after show. But um, they also announced a new uh, game mode where you play as the villains that are going through this trial thing. You play as Voss, uh, Pagan, and Joseph, uh, which is really cool because uh, the Far Cry villains are what makes these games. And uh, then they also announced that including the Gold Edition, you get Far Cry 3. That's pretty cool. Um, and then the, we got the announcement that was spoiled for us by Nintendo of America this morning because they accidentally made the website go live too early. And that's Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. So that would have been a cool surprise to see, but it was ruined and we saw it already early, early this morning. Um, but yeah, the, the main bad guy in that is Cursa. It's somebody we've never seen before. And then you've got the new addition of the Sparks, which are like uh, rabid versions of uh, Lumia. Uh, which is, you know, kind of fun. And that comes out 2022. Right now it's in pre-alpha. And that's what they showed us with the gameplay. Um, and it looks like it adds more, a little bit more of free exploration to the style of play. Uh, and then um, the last thing they ended the show with, I was really hoping we'd get Star Wars because uh, that was one of our predictions. Um, but we didn't. They kind of even teased him saying, oh, with other big companies we're partnering with. I'm like, oh, it's Lucasfilm Games. No. Uh, however, it was a really cool-looking game that I am really interested in, um, and that's Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Now, we didn't get any gameplay. We just got a, got a kind of got a pre-rendered trailer um, of this world that you get to be in, which is Pandora, 
and from what it seemed like to me, it looks like you might be able to toggle between first person and third person view. Um, don't know for sure. I'm sure we'll find out more, but I'm sure it's going to be a vast open world of Pandora that we get to explore. So that kind of wraps up Ubisoft. Um, if you watched our prediction video, uh, we only got the obvious ones correct, and that being Extraction and Far Cry being the bulk of it. Uh, we missed on our three uh, wish list items, and that was Beyond Good and Evil 2. Didn't make a uh, appearance, which I'm really bummed about. I mean, I don't know what happened to this game. It's been since 2017 that we last heard of it. And then same thing with Skull and Bones. We didn't get anything new on that. Not even a little update saying, hey, it's still you know happening. We're just a little bit further back than we thought. Nothing. Um, so I'm really bummed about the absence of those two and, of course, the absence of the Star Wars game they're working on. Um, but maybe we'll see all three of them at next year's E3 or at the upcoming Ubisoft Forward. We don't know. Uh, but then the next one that we're going to talk about that's a, a bigger studio is Gearbox Entertainment. And the first thing they opened it up with was the Borderlands movie, which I'm sure most people are really excited about. And they said they're two-thirds of the way done uh, with filming. So then we got post-production. Post-production does usually take longer than the actual production, the filming part. So we're still a ways out on that. Um, but we kind of got a sneak peek behind the scenes. We got a blurred out uh, Tiny Tina played by uh, Ariana Greenblatt. And then we got um, a uh, silhouette of Lilith played, played by Kate Blanchett. And a silhouette of um, Kevin Hart playing um, Roland. And then we actually got a short little interview with Kevin Hart, which is kind of cool. And apparently he's just killing it being this action hero. Uh, so I'm excited for that movie. And then they kept talking about Homeworld 3. This is a game we haven't seen since 2003, I believe it was, when Homeworld 2 came out. And that's a real-time strategy game. Uh, so they're really putting a lot of love into that. And uh, it's definitely something they're excited about because they brought it up multiple times throughout their presentation. So real-time strategies are always fun. I haven't dove into one deep in a while. So uh, maybe that's one I, uh, I check out. And then uh, we also got um, Tribes of Midgard, um, which is a top-down kind of strategy hack-and-slash game coming out July 27th on PlayStation and Steam. So that game looks like a lot of fun, um, very casual. Uh, it's also on, going to be on <clears throat> the, <coughs> excuse me, very casual uh, style game, but I'm sure it's uh, got a lot of uh, depth into it in its own way. And then uh, finally we got Godfall, Fire and Darkness. That's what they ended the show with, um, and, and Godfall is no longer a PlayStation 5 console exclusive. It is going to come to PlayStation 4 in on August 10th of this year. And I think the reason they're doing that is because they probably missed out on so many sales because not very many people were able to get a PlayStation 5. I say not many, it's over 7 million. But still, compared to the amount of people that own a PlayStation 4 and want a PlayStation 5 and haven't been able to get one, they wanted to uh, make this game available to them, so they did a down port. So it's not going to lose anything. You know, it was originally made for next gen, but they're, you know, going backwards and making it so it can play on PlayStation 4. It is going to be cross generation that you can play it online, and they're introducing matchmaking finally, which is going to be uh, a lot better than their current system. And then they also got. Uh, the Lightbringer edition, which is going to introduce a lot more loot and gear to the game. So that's one I haven't uh, really uh, dove into yet, but uh, I might pick it up and get the uh, Fire and Darkness version. But yeah, that kind of sum sums up our day one of E3. Nothing huge. This isn't the big, big day. That's going to start tomorrow with Microsoft and Square Enix. But still, we got some pretty cool games with Mario Rabbids and Avatar for new big announcements. I'm really excited for that. Oh, and I completely missed one. We got uh, Tiny Tina's uh, Wonderlands, which comes out early 2022, which is going to be pretty cool. And that's a standalone game. It is based off the Borderlands world, Tiny Tina, but it's standalone. They said you don't need to have ever played Borderlands to have fun with it. Um, it's a fantasy type game set in the Borderlands, not in the Borderlands world, but the Borderlands vibe. Um, and the humor style and everything like that. And it's got an all-star cast as well with Andy Samberg, Wanda Sykes, and Will Arnett uh, are the top three that I saw. Those are some pretty huge names of, in comedy. So this is going to be a pretty funny fantasy game that I'm excited for. Um, but yeah, that uh, wraps up E3 Day 1. Uh, let us know in the comments what you guys think. 
Um, did you think it was awesome? Did you uh, were you disappointed at all? What did you want to see? And what are you looking forward to day two? Remember, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And we definitely hope to see you again on Super Platinum Achievement.